confusion. I have an idea. No, I have an idea. What? Classification. Device, device control. What the What's heck device is classification? Control? Monitoring. Blocking. You're going to block. No, you're going to monitor. People are going to be unhappy. Yeah, they won't notice. No plan. Sounds like another day in the office, doesn't it? <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Jay Appel. I'm from Educational Services here at McAfee. I'm going to take you on a fast track showing you a number of the different things that the McAfee Data Loss Prevention for the Endpoint can do for you. It will be a tongue-in-cheek look at the product and provide you a lot of information you can take into your lab. If you would like more information, of course, we'd be happy to see you in the classroom where we have very experienced instructors who have been educators and professional service consultants for a lot of years here at McAfee. Let's get going. Okay, so let's talk about device control. Things like your phone, it could be an Android, an iPhone, Look at this crazy thing. It's a fan. Just gets power from the USB port along with this halogen light. Why do people buy these crazy things? Anyway, I don't know. And then we have a disk drive. There's a pigtail, say a pigtail onto an SSD drive. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe we can put social security numbers on those devices. Maybe move confidential information onto a USB stick. Okay, so let's get you on your way to creating your first device control rule. We have a clean canvas for you so you can see all of your work really magnified and coming to life. Here we have the client. We have the agent status monitor from EPO. This is the communication vehicle from the client. Here's your DLP endpoint console, which can be found right down here in the lower right-hand corner of the client by choosing the McAfee icon. Manage Features DLP Endpoint Console. So there you go. We have right now the McAfee Default, which is basically their best practice for you, but you're gonna have your own policy. And if I go ahead and click here, Collect and Send Props, you'll see the new policy that I actually have applied to this machine called Corporate Policy Monitoring. It is currently at revision ID number one. Put that in the back of your head. We're going to need that in a couple of minutes. Now we're going to switch on over to the EPO server. Here's our DLP incident manager, which is the New England snowstorm. It's all whited out. There's nothing here, but we're going to have a couple of incidents in here in a short period of time. Now where we're going to do all of our work is we're going to go up to the DLP policy manager. Now on my machine, I have a shortcut up here on my toolbar. Of course, if you're new to EPO or new to DLP, you can go up here to the menu in the upper left-hand corner. Go over to Data Protection and select DLP Policy Manager. There are three tabs here. Rule Sets. This is where we will put your data protection rules, your device control rules, different kinds of rules will go right here. Policy Assignments. This is going to be where we're going to take your rule sets and we're going to apply them to your policy that you have in the policy catalog of EPO. This is the policy that gets assigned to all of your machines in your enterprise. Finally, we have the definitions tab. These are all of the items that we've created and given to you for McAfee. However, in the device templates, it looks pretty barren until we put a check mark in here. These are all of the device templates that McAfee gave you. Pretty good, huh? Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to, because we can't edit any of these, we're going to create our own customized. And we're going to choose the removable storage devices for Windows. Head on over there, hit duplicate. And we have a lot of items in here. So let's get rid of all the riffraff by unchecking this checkbox in the upper left and now we're left with the device template copy that we got a couple seconds ago we're gonna go ahead and edit that and we're going to say custom C-U-S-T-O-M there we go now 
We have bus types for USB, Firewire, SD, and of course you can add other items in here, but I prefer to have those in separate rolls. And if you wish to add them, you can here. It's good for tuning later on to know where your vectors are and exactly where they're being plugged in. Right now, removable storage consists of USB, Firewire, and SD. And we're gonna go ahead and hit save. That's all we need to do here. Now we're going to go over to the rule set and we're going to create our first device control rule. New rule set will say monitor USB devices. Click OK. There's the rule. Didn't take very long. You'll notice over here that we have a number of dimmed out icons. The first one here being plug and play devices like for your iPhones. Removable storage device rule, that's what we're going to create here. Citrix, fixed hard drive rule. TrueCrypt, for those of you who are using TrueCrypt. And last, removable storage file access device rule. Let's go ahead and create our device control rule. Actions, new rule, removable storage device rule. And we're going to say here, monitor. USB devices and we're going to enable it by clicking on the state and putting it from disabled to enabled so far so good we're going to enforce this on the Windows platform and if you're going to do it on Macs create another rule so I'm going to uncheck that it's going to be applied to all of our users we're going to monitor everyone for the removable storage insertion and we're going to define that here by choosing the three dots here in the box and we're going to click on it and there's that custom rule that we created just a couple of minutes ago put a check mark in there and click OK last but certainly not least the reaction we're going to have no action because we're monitoring we're going to have no pop-ups on the clients machine we're just going to report the incident in your enterprise. Everyone that has this policy and this rule is going to send an event or incident up to the EPO server and you'll get a chance to see it. There's another item here for computer. If it's disconnected from the corporate network, we're going to treat it as if it was connected to the network or any of the other configurations that you might decide to do. Let's go ahead and hit save. Now you'll notice that we have one more close and there's our rule. And you'll also notice that our removable storage device rule is lit up, ready to go. Now we have to take that rule and apply it over to our policy. And we're gonna do it right here using the policy assignment tab. We're going to put a green check mark right here, right here. To do that, we're going to go down to Actions, go to Assign a Rule Set to a Policy, and we're going to assign the Monitor USB Devices to the Corporate Policy Monitoring. If we had others in here, like Blocking or any others, you would see them here in the drop-down menu. Go ahead and click OK. Now we have to apply it and get rid of this red Yes and make it Pending Changes No, Notice we have revision change one. That's going to pop or increment to version two by going down to the actions in the lower left hand corner. Apply the selected policy and apply monitoring this policy and apply the policy to your clients. There you go. Now it's set to number two. There's no red, that's good. Back to the client we go. It's sitting at one. Let's do an ASCII or an agent to server communication interval, and it's going to pop to number two here. Perfect. Now we're ready. Fingers crossed. Put the USB device in. We see the device is here. I go ahead and open it. There's my goodies. Nothing here on the screen. Don't see a darn thing. Just doing work as normal. Now, behind the scenes, your machine is going to report some incidents. There's four of them right there. 
What do you suppose those are? Let's go back up to the EPO server and let's look at the incident manager. There's the incident manager. It's roughly 12, 13 p.m. Eastern time. You'll see here that we have, it occurred at 512 UTC, but if I click this 460 or this incident ID, you'll see here that at 12, 12, 53 Eastern time on the Eastern time zone, I tripped this monitoring USB device rule and all of the information on the device that I inserted is in the upper right hand corner. In the middle of this screen, you'll see the product version that's installed. You'll see the policy name of the corporate policy monitoring. The user, the name of the machine, the IP address, and the connection state. There you go for your first device control rule as we place USB devices into a monitoring status in your corporation. Thank you. I hope you learned something from that. I'm Jay Appel. I'll see you in the classroom.